Hello guys, my name is Vishal and today we will talk about procure to pay process in Microsoft Dynamics 365 finance and operations. So let's get started. So the procure to pay process is generally comprised of the below components. It all starts with the requisition process. So the requisition can be placed by a department or an employee of the organization. And based on that, it goes through further workflow process for approval or rejection or any amendments. Either the vendor is selected during the workflow process based on the quotations or the vendor can be predefined based on the item which is selected and already has an approved vendor attached to it. Once these two steps are completed, we go to the next stage, which is creation of the purchase order. At this point of time, we have selected the item that needs to be procured as well as the selection of the vendor is completed. So the purchase order process starts from here. Some of the organizations can directly start from the purchase order process in procure to pay. So we can safely, you know, uh, you know, get rid of these two steps, but it all depends on the business requirements of the client and the organization. So further to this, uh, once all the related steps for purchase order creation is completed, we go and receive the goods against that purchase order. And we also receive the invoice for that purchase order. Finally, when the payment is made to the supplier, we will do the invoice settlement. So this is about the whole procure to pay process. So let's go and have a look at the demo for this particular procure to pay process inside finance and operations. So to create the purchase requisition, we will log into Microsoft Dynamics FinOps. We'll go to procurement and sourcing module and further we will go to all purchase requisitions. On this form, we will go and create a new requisition by pressing the new button. Adding the details on of either the person name or the purpose or the department. So we can say that this is for IT department and we are going to procure the computer accessories. And we create the purchase requisition. It can be attached to a project as well, depending on if the requirement is against a project. Onto the line section for this, we will go and add a particular item. We can also choose the procurement category. From there, we can create the purchase requisitions. But for now, we will just add a particular item in here and we will enter the quantity on how much we need this for and the unit of it. So once this is completed, it is all good to go. Submitting, we just need to verify one important thing here that the vendor account is available here. So this comes as default or the if the approved vendor is defined on the item itself this particular vendor account is automatically filled. Otherwise, we can leave this field blank and then we can take the route of creating the quotation for this purchase requisition and send it to one or more suppliers. So once the requisition is saved, we will go and click on the workflow button and we will click on the submit button. We can add the comments here. So once the purchase requisition is submitted for to the workflow, this is in action. And based on this, the purchase requisition is approved. Further to this, the purchase requisition will be marked as closed. So there are different statuses for a purchase requisition when the requisition is submitted to the workflow. I will show that in the PPT on what are the meanings for these different statuses. But essentially, once the purchase requisition is submitted for approval, 
if no amendments are needed and the approver is happy with it, the approval will approve it and then the automatic actions will come into the picture and based on the requisition purpose for the requisition for this purchase requisition, uh, the purchase order is automatically created that we can go and check onto the line details level. So if you click on the line details level for this purchase requisition and you go to the details tab here, you can see the purchase order is automatically created for this. You can simply click on this and go further and see what are the details added to the purchase order. So we can see the purchase order is created here with the vendor selected on the requisition and the item and the price defined here. So before we go further on this purchase order details, I want to quickly go back to the PowerPoint presentation and highlight what we have completed so far. So we completed the requisition part. We chose the vendor and then the purchase order is issued. Also, also as discussed earlier, I want to quickly highlight the different statuses in regards to purchase requisitions. So on the screen, you can see this, this is what it means when the status is closed. When it is closed, based on the requisition purpose, if it is consumption, then the purchase order is generated, which has happened in our case. So now go by, let's go back to the purchase order and proceed with the next steps. So if you are happy with the details available on the purchase order, we can simply go ahead and confirm the purchase order. Once it is confirmed, we can go to the receive tab and generate the product receipt for the purchase order. We can provide the product receipt number here. And we can go and see the lines details and say OK. We can see that the purchase order is received. And finally, we can go and generate the invoice to complete the purchase order process. We can provide the invoice number, the description, and the invoice date, update the match status and post the purchase invoice. So the purchase order is invoiced now. We can go and view the details here of the invoice generated. This is the invoice number. So let's go to the accounts payable module now and generate or settle this particular invoice by generating the payment. For this, we need to go to accounts payable payments and vendor payment journal. We will create a new payment journal. We click on the lines. So we can enter the supplier number here and click on settle transactions. We can search our invoice by filtering on our invoice number and click on mark and we say OK. So the amount is carried over to the field debit here. We can see the offset account type is marked as bank and the method of payment is marked as check. So the first thing we need to do is to generate the payment. And we say, yes, this is the bank account and the export format is check and we say, okay. It will create and populate the check number on the line but it will not be able to print because there is no printer attached right now. So of course the system complains about the printer. However, we can see the check number is populated here and the payment status is set to send. 
So now we'll go ahead and for the post the journal payment journal. So you can see the payment journal is posted. So let's go now back to dynamics and further we will go and see the transactions for this particular vendor and if it has been settled well or not. So we're going to the vendors master form. We'll go and search for our vendor. We will go to the transactions for this vendor. And at the bottom, we can see that these are the three transactions generated in today and settled. As you can see here with the payment channel. So that's about the whole process of procure to pay in which we have covered the whole requisition process, vendor selection, purchase order, goods received, invoice received and invoice settlement. Thank you.